No matter your age, I guess you have seen or used one of these disposable film cameras. They're easy, they're small and they can be a lot of fun. It's basically the aesthetics of 90s everyday photography. And despite being a rather despicable waste of resources, it's really fascinating how simple and cheap these can be mass manufactured. I've disassembled one for my video on viewfinder types, because yes, they come with their own funny little reverse Galilean viewfinder. Next to the viewfinder there's a circuit board for the flash with a double A battery at the bottom. The shutter and film advancement mechanism are some fully mechanical plastic cogs and levers. But there is something else which is rather fascinating about these cameras. Most of them have only a single lens element. No focusing mechanism, no adjustable aperture. Only a tiny piece of plastic. Of course there is a bit more of clever engineering involved. For example the film plane in the camera is curved to compensate for lens errors. But Anyway, I wanted to know how bad that lens actually is and how can I reuse it for a digital camera. Some people send the whole camera to the lab for development. The lab opens them, removes the standard film cartridge and apparently some of these cameras are then passed on to the manufacturer for reuse or recycling. To which degrees this can be taken at face value is mm, disputable. At least in the 90s Fujifilm had a facility for disassembly and claimed to reuse at least some of the circuit boards, lenses and mechanics. The rest just got ground into raw materials. There's a Japanese documentary of the process. If that factory is still running with a lot fewer cameras around today, hmm, who knows. But let's assume you've got one and you want to keep the body you just need to open it and remove the film yourself. Mandatory safety warning if you're doing this for the very first time. The battery in the camera is charging a capacitor for the flash. Even when the battery is removed the capacitor may hold a charge. Use an insulated screwdriver to short the legs. Only then you know it's safe to touch. Of course some people find use even for these high voltage capacitors. Once you peeled away the shell, it's easy to see that the lens is only secured by a plastic ring. Just pop the ring or unscrew it and you've got the lens. I designed a 3D printable lens housing for Sony E-mount cameras, links in the description. We just need to print it and put the lens in there. Screw it together and we're ready to go. In the 3D model you can define your aperture size. The disposable cameras have an f10 or 11 sized hole, so we'll go with that as well. Testing them on a digital camera looks, well, not as good as like a real lens, but not completely garbage either. But I mean, the disposable camera is meant to produce 36mm negatives suitable for 15cm print, so it's exactly as good as it needs to be for this task. On an APS-C camera the 35mm are more like 50 and that's quite narrow. Can we maybe get it a bit wider? One of the nice things about lens power or diopter is that it's additive. Instead of one lens with a very strong curvature you can line up two with half the power and get the same refraction of light, more or less. This concept can be found in many lens designs, most of them going back to double Gauss lenses, first introduced by Carl Friedrich Gauss. To be precise, Gauss did that originally not so much to get a more powerful lens, but to reduce reflections and optical aberrations. But anyway. So let's salvage a second camera and put these lenses back to back. We just need to redesign our lens housing and print it again. In the new design we add a tiny shim in between the lenses to act as an aperture. With twice the refracting power we get half the focal length. Our 35mm becomes something like 17mm on a full frame and 26mm on an APS-C camera. In the images you see some vignetting. For full frame cameras it's even stronger but I had none at hand for testing.
The nice thing, it's pretty easy to print a screw thread, so focusing is no issue. In general, I like the double lenses a bit more, it's simply more toy camera aesthetics. What do you need if you want to do the same? A 3D printer, a bit of glue or M2 screws and a disposable camera, that's all. I use these Ilford branded ones, but that's a common type which is sold under many different names. If the lens from your camera is slightly larger, you can easily change the variable in the parametrized 3D model if you're using Fusion 360. So I'm really not the first person coming up with these ideas. There are a lot of videos about reusing Kodak Funsaver lenses in body caps. And a Japanese company is selling double lenses built from salvaged Fujifilm quicksnap cameras. George Moore even built a three lens wiggle cam made with recycled lenses from disposables. I've linked all of them in the blog post you'll find in the description. Last thing, if you don't already have one around, please don't buy a disposal camera. It's not the 90s anymore and there are a lot of great alternatives if you want the disposable camera look. But these new plastic cameras are actually infinitely reusable and pretty cheap. Don't create avoidable waste. That's it. Have fun.